Well, no, talking about The Walking Dead doesn't bore me. That's pretty much what I've been doing for the last 12 years, is drawing zombies. If it wasn't for The Walking Dead, you wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here talking to you. It's put me as, a, as an artist on, on the map. But what, what I also like to make people aware of is I had a career for well over 10 years previous to The Walking Dead. Um, and there's a lot of stuff of mine out there, and hopefully there will be a lot of stuff out there of mine post The Walking Dead. I think, like with most people, I kind of fell into doing um, The Walking Dead and I suppose being associated with horror comics kind of by accident. I love horror. You know, there's, there's no secret about it. I like zombie movies, but I'm not a major, you know, they're not, I don't find them the best thing ever or anything like that. What attracted me to The Walking Dead wasn't, you know, the zombie mayhem. What made me read the first couple of scripts that Robert had written, you know, and, and enjoy them was, was just the way he wrote the people, not, not the, you know, the various attacks or, or whatever, you know, the various scenes of carnage. That was secondary to me. You know, it's quite often we can go many, many issues without showing a single zombie. And I don't think the fans mind that. I think all the fans are into the characters now. They're, they're not really fussed about, you know, pages and pages of zombie destruction. I think if, if we'd have done that, we'd have lasted 12 issues and that would have been it. <laughs> Robert and I chatted a few times and I had no idea what else Robert was doing until he literally emailed me out of the blue one day and just said, are you interested in doing this small <laughs> zombie comic I'm writing? Here's the first six issues if you're interested. You know, Tony Moore, the original artist, has decided to, you know, leave. Are you interested? And it would have been one of those weird things where I could have easily have said no if I was working on something else. But him, thankfully, he literally emailed me in between jobs. I'd just finished doing a Batman, so... At the t I just said yes, because there was nothing else. <laughs> and not, not just that, I mean, the script was good, admittedly. I mean, if the script was terrible, even I would have, you know, even if I had nothing else to do, I'd have probably turned it down, because, Obviously, at the time, it's for Image, and Image were had a reputation at that time for being, you know, just a very small independent. Yeah, they'd, they'd, they'd lost all the kind of the big bluster of the original, whatever, six or seven artists. So, as you know, am I prepared to work for you know this tiny little company after I've worked for Marvel and DC? Uh, so, yeah, much to my eternal thankfulness. I, I just said yes. We, we have to remember TV is completely different to comic books. I mean, there are obviously a lot of similarities as well. And, and you know, we are close, close cousins, I suppose, to the film and TV industry by the very nature with sequential storytelling. But also there is a lot of difference. So I've never expected the TV show to follow the comic religiously. And I think it'd be pointless if it did. The TV show has to go its own, own way, I feel. And it makes it a bit more exciting, makes it worth watching. It makes me want to watch it. <laughs> and you know, because Robert's so actively involved with it as well, I'm not worried that the thing's in the wrong hands, it's in great hands. And it's still, it's still quite nice to know that our little comic is still dictating what the basic premise of the TV show is still doing. When I was young, I pretty much did what I do now. Ever since I can remember, I've drawn comic books. I was about six. My dad brought me uh, the first issue of The Mighty World of Marvel. From that moment when my dad brought me that one comic book and I continued to collect them after that, you know, my, I think my career path was set. I entered the industry pretty much as most people did, just by t carrying around my portfolio and going to various conventions in the UK. I mean, I was lucky at the time because when I was trying to get into this industry. I was coming in off the back of uh, the massive success of American comic books at the time after the Dark Knight, Watchmen and everything like that. I spent about two years 
sort of hiking myself around with a with a portfolio until I finally got work on the Judge Dredd magazine, which was pretty much my first uh, professional comic book work. I pretty much worked on the magazine for a, a year doing various strips. The year after that, I, I moved over to Marvel UK, which kind of led to me in a roundabout way, getting the Mars Attacks gig, which is my first um, sort of mini series for Topps Comics, which obviously led on to the X-Files, which was obviously Topps Comics as well. And then after the X-Files finished, yeah, loads of stuff. <laughs> Where do I begin? <laughs> White Death, I think, has to stand as my prizes achievement so far, just because of all the elements that were involved with it. To cut a long story short, uh, White Death came up, and my initial reaction was to not do it as black and white comic books or whatever, but to do it in this style, this uh, charcoal and chalk on grey paper, to sort of conjure up the atmosphere of World War Two, uh, World War One, sorry, you know, on, on the Italian front up in the mountains. Robbie Morrison, the writer, wrote just a phenomenal script. But also the fact is we produced it, the initial book ourselves. We formed a little group called Les Cartoonistes Dangereux uh, to produce the book. So it really was a, a group effort between five or six of us to make this book. So all these factors make it probably still my proudest achievement. I mean, yes, I'll look back on the artwork now and grind my teeth a bit. And it was something that was drawn nearly, you know, 18, 19 years ago. So obviously I, I would like to think I've got better since then. But as a whole thing, I still stand by the book and just think, yeah, that, that was something else. I'm always interested in sort of, you know, challenging myself as well as an artist and doing something different. With Rock Bottom, um, I decided to take out all blacks. So I just did it as pure line work. I really had to be mindful on um, getting, again, getting everything right. And I couldn't hide behind shadows or color, you know, sort of half doing a face, you know, with, in shade. It's a good cheat because you can hide half a face. You don't have to draw a half a face, you just put it in shadow. Normally I, I just sketch things out really roughly and then draw in the ink. I couldn't do that with Rock Bottom because the, the pen work had to be really precise. But I still maintain I think it's one of the best things Joe's ever written. Wendigo was uh, an interesting one because it's fueled by my love of French and Belgium comic books. You know, I've always been a massive fan of, of uh, the Bon Désigné as soon as I went to Angoulême many, many years ago with some friends who were fans of, of that industry. At the time, I was only really aware of, of the obvious stuff that came out of Europe, like Asterix, Tintin, you know, Mobius, you know, the kind of the, the more obvious heavy metal stuff. But when I saw the variety and just the incredible artwork of what the French Belgium industry had, it was just like, duh, it was just opened up a whole new avenue for me. I've always harbored a, an ambition of working for the French market. Um, I mean, so many artists in this country always look towards to America for getting work, whereas I just thought, well, why don't a few people turn around and go the other way? It's only 21 miles across the, uh, the English Channel. Why do we have to look 3,000 miles the other way across the Atlantic when, when there's this amazing industry? Obviously, the American industry is still dominated by the superhero. We are just constantly fed in, in America and the UK just, you know, regurgitations of the same stories over and over and over again. Whereas you go to Europe, you just see a vast number of different genres, all of which seem to be given the same amount of space and respect and everything and and just the quality i think the quality of not the quality of the art the quality of the writing and also the quality of print is is different as well the, the rhythm of working is very different as well i mean obviously just by its very nature the walking dead for instance is a monthly comic book that that's how we do it 
initially my other other countries see it as the collections but I'm doing it basically 22 pages a month. It's a rush. It's as simple as that. I cannot afford the luxury of spending days on a page. Um, whereas for French, whatever, uh, comic books, I can, I can afford the luxury. You know, my contract for Vampire State Building is I've got a year to do it in once I start drawing it. I mean, for me, that's an incredible luxury. That's 48 pages. There are disadvantages to that as well, obviously, because when you are drawing really fast and you're churning the pages out, you get a really good sense of the story. If you are spending days on a page, you're not getting a good sense of the story. And, and, and you could fall into the trap of, of spending hours working on, on a panel and, and getting into the minutiae of something which is almost irre irrelevant to the story or anything like that and you're falling to that sort of trap which I think a few artists do. So it does have its downside as well but for me at the minute it just feels like a luxury to be able to have such a big deadline and, and not feel pressurised to get you know a single page done in you know half a day or something like that. There's quite a few projects uh, I've got in the works, some of which are reprints, some of which are brand new. Delcor have just reprinted my work on Savage, which I did for 2000 AD. That, I started working on that before The Walking Dead and it went into the first few years of doing The Walking Dead. So as that's just come out, which is a nice, a nice collection. I'm doing a series of 11 covers for the reprint of Astronauts in Trouble, which is a book I worked on uh, again a long time ago uh, with a writer called Larry Young. Um, I'm doing a series of 11 covers, all of which link up, which is quite interesting and a challenge to make them all link. That one and I suppose the most exciting thing I'm doing, uh, aside from hopefully finishing Passenger one day, is uh, I'm just going to start drawing uh, a book for Soleil called Vampire State Building. Um, don't really need to tell you what that's about. So, yeah, the title is fairly self-evident. Um, and uh, that's a two book series. So I'm very excited to be starting that so I can get my, uh, my fix of doing uh, some Bon Désiné again after, after a long time. Um, I think that for a while will lead me easily into the next couple of years so uh, beyond that it's hard to sort of see what I'm doing. I'm still talking to Delcor about doing other stuff but to be honest at the moment if I can just do keep doing The Walking Dead and do the odd um, you know French Belgium album in between I'll be more than happy because that's that's my kind of idea of heaven. <laughs> Didn't think much of him. Careless and dumb, but can't leave him like this. <laughs>